Okay, my wonderful students, let's uh, let's get rolling. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, and unfortunately, I was a few minutes late, so we're, buying, we're a little small buying for time. Uh, we're going to work on interactions and impulse today. We're going to work out some examples. You'll be doing some clicking calculations, so have your calculator and your clicker ready uh, as we go. At the end of class, I'll give you uh, the revision of the homework plan. And there will be homework. It is already published uh, in web courses. And uh, let's go. Now, we've talked about the third law and uh, Newton's second law and momentum. And I want to reinforce that a little bit today using this, this is a, a diagram from another textbook. Um, and it shows an astronaut pushing off of a little tiny spacecraft in space, the force on the space from the spacecraft on the astronaut points off to the left, and the force on the astronaut uh, from the uh, the force from the astronaut on the spacecraft uh, points off to the right, uh, and they're the same size. And you know, in other words, Newton's third law. So, according to uh, Galileo and Newton, the astronaut on the spacecraft. They're in contact for the same amount of push-off time. So we're assuming they're pushing off, okay? And he's going to try to send the satellite going in a particular direction. The interaction forces are the same. Now, they're not external. If you think of the spacecraft and the astronaut as one system, then the push forces on each other are internal forces. They're not external. Now, gravitation... You know, if they're orbiting the Earth, you know, staying in orbit, those would be external. But we're neglecting that. We're, at, we're just assuming they're out there floating in space. So the only thing that's different about the interaction forces is uh, they're the same size but opposite directions. Now, I wrote that down here in a vector statement, vector F, uh, S on A, that's spacecraft on astronaut, is equal to the opposite of a vector F astronaut on spacecraft. In other words, they're opposite directions. So the minus sign here is not really a negative sign because it's not a number equation, it's a vector equation, but you can say opposite of or opposite direction of. All right, and so we're gonna use that in our derivation here. So th those things being uh, the same, the product F delta T has to be equal out other than, the, than being in opposite directions. All right, so let's take a look at that. Um, so um, the product, and, and here I'm switching to subscript H for the human because the letter A uh, is also, we're going to use that for a symbol for acceleration. So F subscript H, the human uh, times the interaction time equals the opposite of uh, the force uh, on the spacecraft times delta T. All right, now, if you think about it, each of those Fs are also MAs. So the mass of the human times the acceleration of the human, whatever it happens to be, times delta T equals this junk right here, all right? And then the same thing on the, on the uh, spacecraft side. Mass of the spacecraft, ms, times acceleration of the spacecraft, as. All right, so that's squared away. So nothing, and that's basically an application of Newton's second law, f equals ma. All right, now we break down the acceleration into delta v over delta t. Nice, we already know that. Long time. Definition of acceleration. Uh, and acceleration is delta v over delta t, so in this case, Delta V subscript H over delta T. That's this guy right down here. And uh, so, and the same thing over with the spacecraft side. So that's good. Um, and that's going to allow us to, uh, to see uh, that we've got M delta V uh, on both sides. So the quantity M delta V defines the change of momentum. And we know that the momentum definition is P equals MV, either um, scalar version if you're just doing a simple calculation, or vectors if you have to work in components and stuff. Mass M is a scalar, it's a constant. So you can definitely say 
that the momentum exchange, the delta T's, let me go back over here. Yeah, uh, let me see if I, oops, that's the wrong key. Okay, the delta T's over here at the end All right. When we substitute in delta V over delta T for the acceleration here, um, then those delta T's cancel out. So you really just have MH times delta VH. That's the change in momentum of H. And that's equal to the opposite of the change in mo. Oops. Anybody see a mistake I made? I forgot a minus sign on the right-hand side of the third equation block. Go ahead and add it into your notes. That should be the opposite of M subscript S times delta VS. So that being the case, you can say that the, um, the change in momentum is equal but opposite. All right. And that's what I have here in 3C. Momentum, momentum exchange between the human astronaut and the spacecraft are equal but opposite. And or you could just say, you know, as, as Newton said in his third law, equal but opposite reaction. So here it is in vector format. Now I have the minus sign in there where I need it. Delta P subscript H. Whatever he gets, the astronaut, the spacecraft gets the same amount, but the opposite direction. And here's another interaction, you know, that terrestrial. If if you ever, you know, if you ever go to the rifle range and you shoot a 22, you know, the 22 gives you a kick. Not much because it's a small caliber uh, rifle, but you, know, you get a little kick in your shoulder. You know, and if you have a big shotgun, you get a big kick. Or like those big sniper rifles that they use, you know, over in a, you know overseas and whatnot. Those things have a whale of a kick because they're lobbing a rifle bullet down range at high velocity, small mass compared to the rifle, but the rifle gets the same amount of momentum back into your shoulder. All right, and there's ways to mitigate that stuff. But anyways, so this is the basic uh, interaction structure uh, of the universe. That's it. Exchange of momentum. Now, if you're looking at the moon uh, orbiting the Earth, you can see that the moon is exchanging momentum with the Earth, but it's 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 exchanging it continuously. You know, so the delta T's are really teeny tiny. You know, even a millisecond is is too too large of a delta t, but a millisecond will do if you're trying to track the moon, and and land something up there. So the momentum change is the same uh, for an occupant. Now this is a quote um, from Chapter Ocho, Section Two. Uh, the momentum change of the occupant of a car with the airbag uh, is um, is. Uh, it's the same amount, but it, if you have the airbag employed, it increases the amount of delta T. So that means F delta T has a small F and a big delta T if the airbag deploys. If it doesn't, you stop with instantly on the steering wheel and you break your head open. Hopefully, you know, not. But I mean, hopefully you, you, your airbag deploys. But this... Now, this is the impulse equation or impulse formula. F net times delta T equals delta P. And, yeah, so, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're traveling 50 miles an hour and you come to a stop suddenly, you know, your car can handle a deceleration, but you cannot. You know, if, you, if your head hits the windshield or the steering wheel or something, you're going to have a concussion or worse unless the airbag deploys. And that increases the delta T. It's kind of like a parachute. You know, you pop the parachute, and now your terminal velocity is a lot small, a lot smaller. All right, same same kind of philosophy here. All right. Now, my editorial comment to you, and what we're going to be working on here in a second with some clicker questions is, the uh, F net delta T equals delta P impulse equation is the natural way to work out uh, the specs of a stopping time problem. So if somebody asks you, like, like A may ask you on exam three, 
what is the amount of time to stop, you know, a car on a, on a road with so much friction stuff? This is what you use. If I ask you stopping distance, you'll use a different formula, at least to start. But, you know, you could do everything with F equals MA and, you know, delta V equals A delta T and all that stuff. Figure out some stopping distances, the stopping times. And we did that the other day. Now, let's do some clicker questions about impulse. F delta T equals delta P. All right. And we're going to do multiple choice to start. Question. Brandon, you forgot your clicker. We're just going to have a few today. By the way, students, if you ever forget your clicker, you know, at home or whatnot, you know, don't just take notes and, and record your questions. Don't bring it up on papers, you know. Because that, that's why I build it in. 85% is considered full participation. So that means if you biff it for a lecture or two, or if you're absent for a lecture or two over the semester, you know, you're good. You'll still be able to get 85%. So don't sweat it. Uh, another thing, I had a student asking me, uh, Dr. B, what's the best way to study for this class? I want to get my grades up. And for everyone in here, Everyone here that breathes oxygen, right? If you're from another planet and you don't need oxygen, you, you don't have to listen to what I'm about to say. But everybody, any, every oxygen breather in here, what you want to do is find a study partner or a study group and study with another human being. And is that your study group? Yeah, good. And the reason being that to study with another human per, uh, human being is to talk. You know, you talk stuff over. And talking stuff over, you have to think about what you're saying. And you're listening to the other, to your study partner about what they say. Now, the usefulness of it is if you stumble over a concept, but your study partner doesn't, then you're golden. You'll, your study partner will correct you and vice versa. If your study partner stumbles over some misconception, but you. But you don't, you know, you've got it knocked, uh, then you can help them. And that way you can both get stronger and the, and what you're going to find is that it will make you uh, be able to think more rapidly and with more confidence. And that is what you want on my exams. Okay. If you're just studying by yourself, endless hours memorizing the book, which I do not recommend. I anti-recommend memorization for the most part. Um, you're, you know, you're going to, you know, you're setting yourself up to panic time. And a meltdown during the you know during the final and and I've seen it you know and there's nothing I could do on exam day you know you you've got to you've got to be ready to roll so second uh, in addition to finding a study partner go to SI I've been hearing some good reports about SI that it's helping people uh, and uh, SI is a great place to find another friend to study with you know everybody that's there at SI is a serious student. I wish I could turn this off, but uh, so so go to SI, make friends with somebody there, you know, and they'll be a serious student, and you'll be in SI, and SI is a place where you talk things over with Santi, and he's an expert, you know, relatively speaking, you know, well he's aced, he's already aced the class, you know, so he's a good SI leader, all right. Now, clicker questions. If you have your your go with nitro, multiple choice question number one. Blob of green jello in space.
20 seconds to answer. If you read it carefully, you can figure it out in 20 seconds. You do it, the math in your head. Okay, 20 seconds to answer starting right now. Ten seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Two hundred eighteen students crushing the ex you, you did good. Um, answer twenty four. Hey, if a few of you got tripped up. Here's the calculation. There it is, F delta T. So 12 newtons. <laughs> 12 newtons times 2 seconds, ding, 24. That's the only thing that's got a 24 in there. So I mean, that's a – and notice that the units of a newton second, you know, a newton times a second, is kilogram meter per second that's that's momentum all right so anytime you have anytime you have a force times a time interval that's going to give you uh momentum units kilogram meter per second all right next question and this one's it now in the foreground the other the previous one's in the background um could you figure out the change of velocity Look at the question in yellow. Yes, no, or maybe. Well, all you have is no, yes or no. Twenty seconds to vote starting right now. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Nice. Uh, yeah, you guys did a good job. Uh, the answer is yes. And in fact, uh, delta T or uh, delta V is uh, about 5.3 meters per second uh, in the direction of. Uh, you know, wherever the tractor beam is, is towing you. Okay. Question? Uh, just delta delta P over the mass. That gives you delta V. All right. And another way that you could do it, I mean, if you, if you felt like it is, you know, 12 newtons, there's your net force. Mass 4.5, divide those two, you get the acceleration. Acceleration times two seconds, and that'll get you 5.3 as well. So, you know, there's two ways to skin a cat. F equals MA is a little bit longer. Uh, and as I said, the uh, impulse form is a little bit faster. All right, now, another thing that is, and this is just basic impulse here. Now, I said that stopping time questions were good to use uh, for the impulse formula was good to use for stopping time. Let's take a look at one. Here's one uh, that I have in, inside web courses. I won't be giving you this, uh, but I, you know, if I could, if I wanted to, I could. Given a coin of mass 0 0.05 kilograms sliding across the table from x1 to x2, from left to right, at initial point x1, it has a speed of 1.7 meters per second rightward, and then it experiences a frictional force, it slows down to a stop at position X2, all right? So in this instance, the frictional force is 0 0.020 newtons leftward. All right, now we're going to put, um, we're going to use that uh, friction force in a second. So it slows down to a stop at position X2. What is the stopping time for this coin? Okay. So you're trying to figure out delta T of F delta T equals delta P, the impulse formula. So figure out P1 and P2, final and initial, 
and then figure out delta P, all right? Now, what's the final momentum? Final momentum, raise your hand. White hat. It's zero because it stopped. So P2 is the easy one. P1 is, you know, a little calculation. It's not too bodacious. Now, on the other side of the impulse formula is where you put your friction force. Now, it's leftward, so we want to use – and on this formula, you have to pay attention to the sign, uh, the S-I-G-N of your forces and your delta X's and your delta T's and everything, your delta P's. All right, so we use negative 0 0.020 newtons in the equation using a directional uh, negative sign, all right? So here we go. Uh, P1, uh, that's the initial momentum, uh, 0 0.05 of the mass times its initial speed, its rightward. So we'll call that a positive 0 .0, uh, 0 0.085 kilogram meter per second. Okay, uh, P2 is just good old zero because it stopped. Right, so we're ready to figure out. We got P1 and P2. P2 is kind of cinchy. Nice. Anytime you have a, anytime you start something from rest or something comes to rest, you're going to have zero velocity, zero momentum, zero kinetic energy for either initial or final. So it makes it kind of easy. All right. So these two quantities, and you're going to be doing this in a second uh, on clickers. Um, this allows you to go over here and get your uh, delta P. All right, so 0 P, P final minus 0 0.085 kilogram meters per second. So delta P as a vector is negative 0 0.085. The change in the momentum is leftward. You've lost momentum. You've Losing rightward momentum means acquiring negative momentum. There it is. All right. So now that's going to go into the impulse formula. All right. Now on the left side of the impulse formula, now we put our friction force over there, right next to the delta T. All right. Negative 0 0.020 newtons times some unknown stopping time. But now, you know, you can you can calculate from here. I'll just point something out. Uh, you could cancel the negative signs now if you take an ocean to do so, right there and there, cancel negatives left and right. You can also cancel, uh, you, know, uh, you know, kilogram meters per second squared and stuff. Uh, but I'm going to take that to the next page. Let's go to the next page. All right, so here's the here's where we were, okay. And you know, here's you know here's the basic impulse equation. Here's our plug-in stuff. We computed delta p. You know, we plugged in uh, known values for p one, and we got that. Then we computed delta p, and then we had a value for the friction force. Now to clear. Um, we uh, just divide both sides by negative 0 0.020. And if, you know, if you canceled your minus signs earlier, then you divide by a positive 0 0.020 because it's already gone. But either way, you get a positive number. All right, so here's your c computation, 0 0.085 over 0 0.020. Now, you may think to yourself, Dr. B, I can just do this. I can almost do it in my head, but I can definitely do it in two moves on my calculator instead of writing everything down here. That is correct. And I'm spelling it out in case you forget your calculator uh, on exam three and you have to do um, a calculation like this uh, longhand. Now you know how to do it. You know. So your, uh, your conclusion is uh, 4.25 seconds. So on you know on the uh, on the test I might ask you what is calculated to the nearest tenth of a second so if I do that then you would write 4.3 all right now I'm going to ask you another clicker question 
uh, multiple choice. Here we go. Basketball. And just do the same thing. What's the stopping time? And I'll give you a few minutes to do this. And, you know, definitely ask uh, the L.A. who's circulating around the room if you get stumped. Or just check in with your neighbor, you know. And as, as I always say, speaking with a number, another human being is definitely helpful. You can't do it on the test, but you can do it here in lecture. You know, and actually, if you think about it, you can you can actually do this one mental arithmetic. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, yeah, you guys did good. Answer one point two. Hey, you know, delta V is basically 0.6 kilograms times 22. Divide that by the force, 22 divided by 11, that's 2. So really, it's 2 times 0.6, 1.2. You can actually do that one without even hitting the, the calculator if you're, if you're smart. But let's keep going. Here's your – if you do it out longhand, here it is. If, you know, you know, F delta T equals delta P, impulse equation. And here's your side calculation. Over in the yellow box, there's your initial momentum. So delta P is 0.0, .0 kilogram meters per second uh, minus 13.2 uh, kilogram meters per second initial. And that's equal to the friction force with a negative sign for left. Uh, and times delta T. All right, so it's, uh, you know, so it ca calculates out that way. So we're, we're doing good here. And you're not going to have this for your written homework uh, tonight, due on Friday, but um, it's, you're, it's, it's good background. Now, what you are going to have for uh, homework is conservation of momentum. And I want to go through this um, quickly with you. Conservation of momentum, which you can read about in Chapter 8.2, uh, I believe. The skateboarders, the skateboarder example that we had on the very first day of class, um, they exchanged the same amount of delta P, left and right, just opposite directions. And so if, if there's no external forces acting, like the astronaut in space, you know, we're neglecting gravity, then the momentum of a group of interacting objects remains the same in the absence of external forces. So if both are ex initially at rest, the momenta afterward also have to add up to zero. They have to add up as vectors, plus for rightward, negative for leftward. All right, now we're going to do collisions on an idealized railroad track where there's just the interaction of the boxcars. And I want you to uh, do this very carefully. 
So we're going to ignore vertical forces, gravity balanced by the railroad track rigidity, and no rolling friction, which, you know, railroad cars will go a long way if the rail is flat. So here we go. We've got three box cars on the right, one on the left, and the one on the left is moving 4.4 meters per second. The other three, the velocity of the group is zero. They're, they're just kind of sitting there. Right? So we're going to have an impact, and they're going to interact, the, the third box car, with the first one. Uh, and they have a mass of 35,000 kilograms each. Now, tonight you're going to be working with box cars on the written problem, something like this, except they're going to be in a head-on collision. Same principles apply. So here's my, here's my box car number one. Velocity one is 4.4 meters to the right. The other four is zero. So let's calculate the momentum initially for the system of all four box cars. So we calculate four individual constituent momenta. Okay, momentum number one is 35,000 kilograms times 4.4 meters per second to the right. All right, that's good. We can calculate that. But then the others are zero. I got three zeros because they're starting at rest. Right? So they're initially at rest. Um, so all the momentum of the system before they interact is locked up in the first boxcar. And so that works out to 154,000 kilogram meters per second. Now we're assuming they're all identical masses. Your homework, you're going to have two different masses but you'll still be able to do the same thing, calculate moment, momentum before and afterwards. Now, afterwards, P subscript F for the system also has to be 154,000. Why? Well, let me ask you a question. Go to your clicker and type in a letter. Oops. Oopsie doopsie. Why must the initial momentum state equal the final momentum state? Select an answer A, B, C, D, or E, and then hit the send key. Because I want to be able to give more than one correct answer. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, zero. All right, get your answer in. Come on. Hit the send key. All right. Um, uh, you can't, some of you put A, B, C, D, E. That's incorrect. There's only, you're laughing, but you, you just got it wrong. I mean, it's not. I'm not, you know. Raise your hand if you voted for E. Okay, good. Uh, raise your hand if you voted for C. All right. A or C is good. Okay. Now, let's keep going. So your, your momentum afterwards, your momentum afterwards is 154,000. Now, that's because of the conservation of momentum. No external forces. Momentum is conserved. Now, the definition of momentum says that's equal to the total mass times whatever the new velocity is, so you can figure out the new velocity. All right? So the total mass, they're all going off at the same speed, so it's like one gigantic boxcar, 140,000 kilograms. So that's the mass of the new uh, uh, object that's in motion. 
So all you got to do is divide both sides by 140,000 and bam, you've got it. All right. Now, uh, let me see here. Um, let me move down here and give you some some comments about homework. All right, now listen carefully. The homework plan, the initial plan was for everybody to get graded by me twice this semester. But we've, we, we messed up for about three weeks there, and so that's no longer possible. So we're going to do one pass through everybody. So that means homework six and homework seven, homework six tonight, due to Friday, are going to get regular grading. And then next week, uh, right before spring break, regular grading. All right. Now, what that's going to do uh, is, and here's your here's a diagram. You're going to be doing box cars tonight. So, what that's going to do is bring everybody up to date and equivalent. After spring break, we're going to do the following. By the by, the time spring break hits, everybody will have had one homework graded by me and the rest graded by the grader. After spring break, we're going to do additional written homework due on Fridays, but they're going to be do-overs to replace one stinky homework grade that you may have, uh, whichever one of your own choosing, all right? And it'll be in smaller groups, which I'll announce after spring break. All right. Now, hold on. Your homework number six is up in web courses on the homework page. Uh, go to it and use discussions and study with a friend. You're dismissed. I'll see you next next time.